<laughs> we practically did nothing for most of the day. We're in this electronic store and I just went around and left my Instagram and YouTube videos on the screens of like, I don't know, 20 devices. So let's see if I get some new subscribers and followers from it. <laughs> so we decided to go out for a walk. <laughs> and I'm going to take advantage of the fact that Brussels is a very photogenic city and take some street photos. I think I'm going to shoot this building from like straight under it up because there are some very nice reflections from it on oh, other exposed. <laughs> um, and it's looking really good. So what I'm currently looking for is building lines because everything here is very, I want to say geometrical because like everything is built very precisely. So there are a lot of leading lines and that's what I'm looking for when I'm shooting, when I'm shooting on the roads or when I'm shooting buildings. And that's one thing that I highly recommend to do if you're going to try street photography. junction for the past let's say 15 minutes trying to find some nice compositions because I'm waiting for it to get dark because the building right behind me uh, it, during nighttime at least from what I saw yesterday when I, I arrived it's lit very well and this junction looks like a very main junction and main junction with a lot of cars so I want to take advantage of that and take an exposure later. But right now it's still light and I can take an exposure. So I'm just looking for it to get dark, shooting some stuff around here. And according to Google it was actually supposed to be dark already, but I guess we'll have to wait a bit. I decided to walk around to see if I can find some more interesting compositions. <laughs> And guess what I just found? I'm pretty sure there's a tram line right above these stairs. So hopefully we'll be able to get some nice shots of trams because that's always awesome. There's definitely a tram line here. I'm going to wait a bit because I think if I shoot this way, I'll be able to get some really good compositions. <laughs> I think I'm going to switch to using the 7300 because I want to have a little bit of more of a close shot. Uh, because over there, I'm not sure if you can see it right now, um, but there's practically some light that's still shining on the building and some trams are coming and also cars and pedestrians, so it's looking really good. And I can't really get the shot I want with the 18 to 55 that I have on right now. So I'm not going to vlog it, but Hopefully I'll get the shot and you'll see it on the screen in a couple of seconds.
actually been going pretty well with the trams because I've managed to get some really nice shots, especially with the sunset colors we have going on right now. And I think I'm going to stay with the 7300 because I just like more closed shots with more compression when I'm doing street photography. But the downside is that I can't vlog, so I'm just going to stay with it because earlier today I managed to get some really good shots with it. Right now I'm pretty sure I got good shots with it, but I have to see it on the computer screen. Um, but I'm going to stay with it. My recommendation to you guys is shoot with a pretty closed lens. Preferably a prime lens or a 7200 2.8, but I don't have that on me right now. I only have my Nikon kit, not my Sony kit, so you gotta work with what you have. to using my 35mm because it's got an aperture of f1.8 and although I lost the ability to just zoom in whenever I see a nice composition, now I can get more light into the lens and into the sensor and get brighter photos, which this camera does better because, like I said earlier, it's not very good with low light. So even though having a really good zoom lens when you're doing street photography can really help you because if you see a composition that's like super far away, you can literally just zoom in and get the shot. Sometimes it's better to switch to something that suits the situation better because right now there's no light, I need some more light to get the good photos, so I'm going to use an aperture with an, an, an ah, couldn't talk for a second. So I'm going to switch to using, I forgot to say, I'm just going to use this 35mm prime lens which is sharper and it also got an aperture of f1.8 which means more light, so I'm just going to work with that. I've actually been here yesterday and tried taking some photos of it, but I want to take a photo so I'm walking in front of this building because it just looks really good, symmetrical, and all the shapes on it are very photogenic. So I'm going to wait here until someone passes because yesterday I did get a shot of someone walking almost perfectly in the middle in front of the door, but I slightly missed that. So. I thought to myself that while I'm waiting for the light and the sun to set completely and so it will be night time and I can finally start taking a lot of exposure, I'm just going to wait here near this building and get the shot I wanted to get yesterday. So hopefully someone will pass through with a bike rider or pedestrian and then I'll be able to get the shot that I wanted. <laughs> I'm not sure if I got the shot or not because there aren't many people walking here because it's not a main street so I'm just going to take what I got hopefully I got what I wanted and I'm just going to head to the location I told you about earlier the one where, where I want to take the long exposure and I'm going to go take the long exposure and go back to the apartment because I haven't been with me for I don't know how many hours and I feel sort of bad about that because we're here, we're supposed to travel together and just walk around Brussels and take things to photography. Oh, 
Alright, so I have my film here set up. I have the building on the left first, so that fills that part of the image. I'm going to use the light rails created by the cars to fill the other thirds and get a more complete image. In my mind, it looks pretty awesome. Hopefully, when I actually take the photo, it will be good. Okay, time to see if it works. Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, <laughs> that definitely works. <laughs> I'm so happy that a shot that I planned is working perfectly, exactly like I wanted to. Let's go! <laughs> this is going to be such a sick shot. Oh, this is really good. <laughs> I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think I can already see some potential shots to, st to stitch together and get a final image. So I think we're just going to stay in for a couple of minutes, get a time lapse of this junction, and then head back to the apartment finally after like, I don't know, I think five hours. <laughs> I forgot to film an outro yesterday, so I'm going to do a little one right now. Brussels is a really good city for street photography. I've gotten so many good shots and I'm really happy about that. But I want to finish this video after I looked at the photos and edited them. So I'll talk to you once I'm back in Israel and after I edited the photos and gotten everything ready because I want this vlog, this video, to be more complete and give you my honest opinions on the photos I've taken because there are some really good photos here and hopefully you managed to learn something. So I'll see you once I'm back in Israel. Believe it or not, a month has actually passed since I filmed this video. I just couldn't really get to editing it, but now I did it and I'm so happy that I did because it's such an awesome video and the photos are so fucking good. And I don't know if it's just me being an Israeli and not really being used to seeing the landscape that you have in Brussels or if Brussels is a really good city for street photography that for some reason no one's talking about. I don't know which option it is, but I really enjoy doing street photography in Brussels and it's something that I'd like to do more, not specifically in Brussels, but like in other parts of the world, to see how I interpret, in, uh, how I in, I don't know, I forgot the word. <laughs> Just to see how I'm looking at the streets and how I'm shooting differently in each location. So, yeah, it was really good. I already know about a couple of photos that I know that I'll print, because they're so good. Because I mean, I've just used like this. Ugh. This Nikon D5500, nothing crazy, and I managed to get some really good shots. So I'm pretty pumped about it. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and that you enjoyed the photos. And like I said, I hope that you learned something, and I'm running out of words to say, so if you want, you can leave a like on this video. If you made it this far, you probably liked it. If not, I don't know what you're doing here. Also, subscribe and follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.